Well, good morning and welcome again to Cornerstone Faith Community Church for our uh, weekly online book study series, Word for the Week. My name is Pastor Jeremy and I'm so glad to be with you today as we finish up our look at uh, the book by Max Licato, uh, Traveling Light. Uh, today we're in <laughs> chapter 18 and uh, Licato has titled this chapter Almost Heaven, um, which is such an appropriate title. We're looking at the very last portion of Psalm 23, uh, the very last sentence. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Um, Max Licato has many great sort of anecdotal stories in this chapter uh, about um, going home, coming home, bringing someone home. And the beautiful piece about our faith in Christ Jesus, I think the most beautiful piece, uh, maybe comes to us when Jesus is speaking um, <clears throat> to um, Thomas and to the other disciples. And he says, if I go to prepare a place for you, then you can trust and know that where I'm going, I will bring you with me. You know, and, and Thomas says, but, but Jesus, how in the world could we ever know how to get where you're going? We don't even know where you're going. We don't even know what the way is. And Jesus says, you do know the way. You know the one who is the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, maybe the most beautiful part of that whole dialogue, of course, is when Jesus says, For in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you this. Jesus promises to us a home with him forever, with God our Father, in a room that has been prepared just for for us. Um, I'm not going to recount the stories that Max Licato writes here. If you haven't read the chapter, please go back and read it. They're very, very um, comforting and inspiring stories that he has to share in this chapter. I do want to share with you, though, <clears throat> from the very end of this chapter, talking about how um, Max Licato and his family had adopted a dog, Molly. And Molly had gotten away from them. She ran away from home and they were out looking for her all night long. And the very next day, this is what happened. The next morning, Denelin, that's Licato's wife, was on her way home from taking the girls to school when she saw the trash truck. She asked the workers to keep an eye out for Molly and then hurried home to host the mom's prayer group. Soon after the ladies arrived, the trash truck pulled into our driveway and a worker opened the door and outbounded our dog. She had been found. When Denelin called to tell me the news, I could barely hear her voice. It was Mardi Gras in the kitchen. The ladies were celebrating the return of Molly. This story pops with symbolism. The master leaving his house, searching for the lost. Victories in the midst of prayer. Great things coming out of the trash. But most of all, the celebration that they're coming home. That's something that we have in common with Molly. A party at our homecoming. Um, I believe that the thing God is waiting for most is to see your face, my face, with him forever in heaven. And that's the greatest assurance and promise that I can give you and that we have, is that God has promised to us a home with him forever. I want to read for you some words from a hymn. It's not a hymn that um, we would that we sing at um at our church. It's not one that maybe even you're familiar with, but the, the, the title of the hymn is called Jerusalem, My Happy Home. And I happen to come to know this hymn because um, uh, it, it is sung quite often in the Lutheran church, but um, we recorded this hymn several times when I was singing with the, the Capella Choir at Concordia and River Forest. Um, here's the words of the hymn. Jerusalem, my happy home, when shall I with you be? When shall my sorrows have an end, your joys, when shall I see? Your saints are crowned with glory great, they see God face to face. They triumph still, they still rejoice in that most holy place. There David stands with harp in hand as master of the choir. Ten thousand times we would be blessed, who might this music hear? Our Lady sings magnificent with true tune surpassing sweet. And all the virgins join the song while sitting at her feet. There Magdalene has left her tears and cheerfully does sing with blessed saints whose harmony in every street does ring. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, 
God grant that I may see your endless joy and of the same partaker ever be. Sure, there's pieces of theology in that hymn that maybe, you know, you and I don't necessarily uh, resound with. But the idea here is that there is this beautiful home that awaits us. And what I love about this is the the writer of this continues to ask the same question. When do I get to see it? When do I get to be there? When do I get to enjoy that peace, that joy forever of, of heaven, Jerusalem, our happy home, the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the new earth? Interestingly enough, the writer of this hymn, whose name is uh, Joseph Bromhead, was born in 1748, and he was uh, he he had had studied and, and learned at the Queen's College in Oxford, England. Um, he was uh, made what's called a curate, so he's sort of the director of um, a, a particular place in uh, England called Derbyshire, and he wrote a lot of different um, poems and other kinds of things, um, but he wrote quite a few different versions of Psalms. Um, and this is probably the most famous one that he wrote about Jerusalem being the happy home. Um, the point of this is, is simply this. In every generation of the church, there has always been a hope, a desire, a promise, uh, an assurance, of heaven. And those who have gone on before us know that hope and that assurance even better than we do. Now, my theology informs me, the Word of God informs me to the point where I say they don't know heaven yet. They know a perfect sort of place of rest where they are resting, waiting for King Jesus to raise us all home with him forever, and then together we will all know heaven. But Heaven is a promise for us. Heaven is coming soon. And it's going to be amazing. Now, the other piece I want to talk about with you here is our suitcase page. I guess I got to cover up my face a little bit. So you can see mine has lots of different things written on it. The various different things we've written on it throughout this whole study. And you'll notice that mine, I wrote it in... uh, in red ink. I did that on purpose because um, in a lot of ways I see this baggage that we carry around, these heavy weights that we carry around, uh, uh, they, they, they at least add to the impact of sin in my life. They weigh me down, they burden me, um, they're about me and my, my control, my desires. And so I, I, I put them in red. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to take this out if you still have it. And I want you to flip it over. We're looking at the back side of the page now, all right? And um, and hopefully um, you didn't print this out on like cardboard or something. But I want you to find a magic marker. Now, I've chosen a purple magic marker. Um, and the one thing that I would encourage you is try to make it a permanent magic marker, okay? Um, I've, chose, I've chosen purple because, well, I think it's the color of royalty and Jesus is king. So made sense to me, but you could choose any color. Even black is fine. Just a, a standard permanent magic marker. Now, um, if you're doing this like on your kitchen table or something, put a new piece of newspaper or something under your sheet. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to take that magic marker, right? And on the back, on the back side of your sheet, I would like you to draw a cross, but it has to be a cross that you can color in. Okay. So let me show you here. The idea. I'm I'm not a not a great artist, but I think you'll get the basic idea here. All right, so I've drawn a cross on the back of mine that looks like this. All right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color that in. All right, and I'm not going to waste all of your time in the world waiting for me to color this real pretty like. So I'm just going to kind of color it in. All right. Now, with any luck, when I lift this up to you, you're going to see, right, that on the front of my page, I still see all that stuff that weighs me down, that makes me heavy, that, uh, that burdens me. But what is shining through? the cross that I've drawn on the back of this page. And so no matter how I turn it, no matter how I look at it, no matter how, whatever I do, 
I am seeing that cross shine through uh, all of my burdens. I would love you to know this last thing before we turn closed this book, that no matter what the thing is today that's weighing you down, is it grief, is it shame, is it financial pressure, is it marital relational issues, is it um, uh, aging, is it disease, is it, is it sickness, is it death, what is it? Whatever the things are that, 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 are, that are baggage for you, that are weighing you down, the, the, the real truth of Psalm 23 is that we have a Lord, Jesus Christ, who is our shepherd. And in the midst of all of that weight, in the midst of all of those, those things that weigh us down, his promise is to come and lift us up. And so he shines through. He bleeds through the paper. He shines through in the, all of those moments. And yes, scripture is clear. Difficult moments, trials, troubles, tribulations are going to come our way. It's part of our life here on earth. But Jesus intends to shine through all of them. To see you through all of them. To help you through all of them. To provide for you in all of them. And so I guess what I'm saying today is I hope that no matter what you're looking at today. No matter what's on your sheet. Today, tomorrow, the next day. Always make room for the cross of Jesus to shine through, to bleed through. Let him bleed into every moment of your life. I hope you've enjoyed looking at Max Licato's book with me. I certainly have enjoyed looking at it with you. Don't forget that next Monday, we will start a new book called The Prayer of Agar. Um, and it is written by Jay Payleitner. Um, it is available from Multinomah Books. Uh, it is also available on Amazon um, for your if you're a, a Kindle user. Uh, just as a reminder, the ISBN number is um, well. Actually, the ISBN for the electronic book is nine seven eight zero five two five six five three eight four dash four. And if you're looking for the uh, hard the the actual paperback book and you want to get it on Amazon or some bookstore, the ISBN is nine seven eight zero five two five six five three eight three dash seven i look forward to uh seeing you next monday as we do the prayer of agar we begin that book together in the meantime uh, have a great week and uh, let jesus bleed through shine through in all that you are are experiencing this week we'll talk to you soon bye-bye